Well, fall has started. I'm already wearing my football clothes. And fall means a couple things. Uh, pumpkin spice lattes, leaves, apple picking, and the advent of a new Retroid launch. The big news from Retroid, well, two big newses. You have the RP Mini, which we're not going to talk about in this video, and the Retroid Pocket 5, which we are going to talk about in this video. The closest facsimile I have to the Retroid Pocket 5 is this, the Ioneo Pocket Air. And it actually has the same screen. We're going to get to that in a minute. It's going to be roughly the same size. You're going to have both sticks on the bottom, not this angled guy. So let's talk about the performance. The Retroid Pocket 5 is going to have the Snapdragon 865. It's going to have similar overall performance to the D1100, which was in the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, but it has a Snapdragon chip. And Snapdragon chips offer much better driver support for emulators. So you'll have better turnip drivers for your higher end stuff, and a little more luck upscaling sixth generation consoles. This chip was in the Samsung S20 phones, which were their flagship entries just a few years ago. I had one, and I emulated on it, and I got pretty good performance. Don't expect 100% Switch compatibility, because that's not going to happen. But you're going to have really good PlayStation 2, GameCube, 3DS, all that stuff. It's a solid and budget-friendly chip. Now let's talk about the screen. While your games are running amazing, they're also gonna look amazing on this 5.5 inch AMOLED 1080p screen. Now this is almost a full inch larger than the RP4, which was 4.7 inches. The screen itself is 16 by nine, which isn't ideal for older stuff, but it's a big screen, right? You should be okay. You should overpower any aspect ratio issues just by having a five and a half inch screen. If you are a crazy four by three purist, Maybe get the RP Mini instead. I don't know if it's the exact same screen, like they got it from the exact same manufacturer as the Ioneo Pocket Air, but it's the exact same specs. And this, it had an amazing screen. Now my main problem with the RP4, and the reason why it lost in the head-to-head -head battle with the Ambernick RG566, was the lack of ergonomic grips, at least built-in grips. They had grips you could buy from Retroid, but the, the actual handheld didn't come with any. It had kind of a pancake right and the 556 was thicker than a bowl of oatmeal Girl, you're than a bowl of oatmeal the rp5 has some nice looking ergonomic grips on the back of the handheld which will make it much more comfortable to use without a third party grip or other solutions like that colors after an initial wave of renders was met with some uh antipathy i guess that's a word retroid went ahead and revamped their color options to four winners we've got an all black model an all white model a gray model with Skittle buttons, and the obvious winner for anyone over 30 years old, the GameCube option. Now, Retroid doesn't have a great track record matching colors exactly. I'm thinking of my jungle green RP2S here, but if they can get close to that original Indigo, we've got a beautiful looking colorway that's also going to be amazing at playing almost the entire GameCube library. Almost. There's always one or two games. J-Lash, there's always one or two games that are outliers, but pretty much the entire GameCube library. They also have additional backplates for customization. If you're a DIY lunatic like me, there's all sorts of options for DIY back shell updates. They look somewhat easy to swap. Looks like it's just a few screws. And you can swap in what looks to be transparent black, transparent white, transparent blue, and transparent green. I think mixing blue or green with the gray option will look cool, but you could also do panda options, like a black handheld with a white back, or vice versa. Options are always cool for people that like to tinker or customize. But you don't have to do it at all if you're set with the best option, which is Indigo, obviously. Just buy the GameCube one. Retroid also announced that they were going to launch with Botocera support, which was met with some pushback from the Botocera people, which was kind of awkward. But, but, Retroid responded to them, and it seems like they're going to work with Botocera and Armbian and offer open Linux kernel support for community devs. The devs just need to email them at linuxsupport at goretroid.com. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Mostly because it gives you the potential for a straight Linux implementation on a Snapdragon device. And for all of our GPL fanboys out there, you know who I'm talking to. It's a step in the right direction. Retroid has had one of the best, if not the best, built-in launchers since at least the RP2+. Plus. It has a built-in scraper, there's default folders for your ROMs, just all sorts of quality of life stuff. Retroid has tweeted, as part of their excruciatingly slow drip of news, that there's going to be a new game launcher design. If they keep all the cool features from before while modernizing it, that'd be kind of amazing. Some companies, like Ambernick, are actually trying to make their stock OS a little bit better. But, boy, 
I tell you what, Retroid is on a whole other plane of existence. And if they can make it even better, I'm here for it. So when can we buy it, Zoo? Well, hmm? Pre-sales go live on September 9th, unless there's a random Chinese holiday that pops up between here and December. I think, I hope, I pray, they'll be out before Christmas. That'd be great. In the past, certain colorways shipped out of sequence. So like, I super early bird pre-ordered my Jungle Green RP2S, and it was still on the dock in Hong Kong, while other people who bought after the pre-order period had received like their black handhelds or their gray handhelds. Didn't like that. I just hope Retroid can try to fix this by A, spooling up production, just make a whole bunch of them and have them ready to ship, or B, let us know. Say, hey, if you want the superior option of GameCube, you might have to wait a little bit because everyone bought it. Just let us know. You have your tracking thing on the website. Just let us know. If, if you know ahead of time, hey, Indigo is going to be a hard one to get. Maybe some people, they'll say, ah, I don't want to wait. I'm going to get gray. Just let us know, please, please. Now let's talk about price and combo options. The RP5 is gonna launch for $199 for a 24 hour early bird period. This is the same price as the RP4 Pro right now, which pretty good. After the first day and up until the unit goes live, there's gonna be a pre-order price and it's gonna be just $10 more for $209. Again, pretty decent price. After pre-orders are over, the normal price will be $219. Now all three of these different prices don't include shipping, which is kind of a hidden Retroid tax because other companies offer free shipping. But unless you want to wait until the middle of 2025 to get it off of Amazon or a third party reseller, you kind of have to deal with it. Mm. You can also do a c -c 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 combo breaker and get the RP Mini and the RP5 together for $369, $389 or $399 for those same early bird, pre-order, or standard prices. I feel like since they have the same chipsets, I'm not gonna get both, right? But if you were 50-50, like, do I want the mini? Do I want the big one? Maybe get both, and then the one you don't like, sell it on our Discord or eBay or somewhere. Now this video has been pretty positive so far, and I, I just, I can't make a 100% hype video, so I do have a couple reservations. My main reservation is something that it, it happened a while ago, and people that have been in the hobby for a couple years know what I'm talking about. You had the RP3, and then like, what felt like maybe a week and a half later, they dropped the RP3 Plus. A lot of people felt burned on that one. And I think, I hope, I'm pretty sure, Retroid has learned their lesson because they didn't do it again. They didn't do it with the RP4. You can get both options at the same time. But I do have a little bit of mild anxiety that we're going to get the RP5 and everyone's going to say, amazing. And then right around Thanksgiving, they're going to be like, you know what? We got the RP5 Pro and everyone will be mad. If that happens, if they drop a RP5 Pro with like a Snapdragon 888, I'll be in the front of the mob with a pitchfork with you. I, I just, I just really, I don't think it's going to happen. I hope it doesn't happen. Please don't make it happen, Retroid. Previous launches all had some quality control issues too. So that's my second point of, eh, because like the RP4, when it first launched, it had kind of a weird off color screen. People had issues with triggers when the flip, which I like, I mean, the flip had all sorts of hinge issues. And to, to their credit, Retroid fixed them all, or they just stopped making the flip. Make the flip too. Do it. Do it. To their credit, they fixed everything and then everything kind of went on smoother. So if you are a little bit worried about that, you can always wait until us or someone else gets one of the first review units and does kind of a first impressions and a deep dive and something like screen yellowing will be pretty obvious from the get-go. Long term, 7,000 presses later, my triggers broke. We might not catch that, but we'll try. But if you are worried, just wait for some of the first review videos to drop. Anyway, what do you think? Are you gonna grab an RP5 or an RP Mini, which is an entirely separate video? We didn't really even talk about it that much. You gonna get one? You gonna get both? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that jazz. Click the, the little bell button so you get notifications when we eventually do get some units and start doing first looks and deep dives. We've asked them for some review units. We're also, our team is gonna just buy some because that's what we do. We have We have some impulse control problems, which is very evident if you watch any of our videos. But we are going to try to get those out as soon as we can. So stay tuned to this same handheld channel at this same handheld time. And we'll see you soon. Goodbye.